Happy Thursday, friends. Thanks for giving me five to seven minutes of your time on this holy week as we continue to pause, uh, set our hearts and our minds on what Christ endured this week. Let's do a quick review. As, you, as we review, I would encourage you to turn to John chapter 13. That's where we're going to spend our time today. Monday was Jesus cleared the temple in Matthew 21. Tuesday, Jesus took the day to talk in parables and to equip his disciples for what they would uh, be enduring. Uh, Wednesday, uh, I believe one of the commentators I have said that there was nothing recorded and perhaps it was a day of rest. And we said yesterday, just be still, take some time to reflect and remind ourselves what Jesus went through. Today is the Last Supper. We're going to find that in John chapter 13. Hopefully you're there. I'm not going to be able to cover all that happened in John chapter 13. I want to be able to give you the highlights and then encourage you to go back and read it and think about this and pray through it uh, throughout today. Today is Thursday. If you look at the calendar, it is called Monday Thursday. And why is it called Monday Thursday? Well, Monday comes from an Anglo-French word meaning commandment. And Jesus says in John chapter 13, 34, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. So that's why we call it Monday Thursday. It's the Last Supper. It's the the new the new covenant day that Jesus has done and he has commanded us. John chapter 13 tells us that Jesus was in the upper room preparing his disciples for his death. Jesus was also continuing to prepare himself for his upcoming trial, his flogging. Uh, everybody deserts him. God himself turns his back on him. Jesus is crucified. He is preparing himself for that. But while he's in the upper room, he took time to break the Passover and have the Passover meal. Let me just go on a little tangent here. Something for you to think about, something for you to, to study is that Jesus did the Passover. But then if you uh, now in John 13, but if you read into John uh, 18, 19, you see that the religious leaders who were trying Jesus said, hey, we can't go into Praetorium with Pilate because we haven't taken the Passover. So how can Jesus take the Passover in John 13, but the religious leaders in John 18, 19 not have the Passover yet? Did someone take it wrong? Well, long story short, no. There's two, two different groups of Jews or sections of Jews. There's the northern Jews in Galilee where Jesus is from, and they tracked time differently than the southern Jews or the Jews that lived in Jerusalem tracked their time. One of them tracked uh, the daylight from sunrise to sunrise. The other one did it from sunset to sunset. So within how they tracked their time was allowing them to take Passover at different times. And then that also allowed the priest to be able to do all those sacrifices and have enough time to do it for all the people. So that's a fun study. If you're interested in that, let me know. I'll get you some commentaries. And you go, huh, never thought of it that way. It's something I was uh, reminded of and even uh, learned as my studies was for this week of Holy Week. All right, so anyway, let's go back. I, I digress. I'm sorry. Interesting, fun fact. It's amazing you can what you can learn from God's Word when you study it. So Jesus, he took the Passover meal, and the Passover meal would be taking anywhere from four to six hours. This is not a, a drive through McDonald's. They took a lot of time. They had a great opportunity to fellowship, a great opportunity to remember what God has done for their people. You can find that in Exodus chapter 12 is where the first Passover took place. But I would submit to you this morning, God had a plan even before Exodus 12 for all that this symbolism was going to happen. When they did Passover and they celebrated Passover, they remembered the Israelites would be leaving bondage of the Egyptian oppressors and the angel of death would come and pass over the houses whose houses were covered in the blood of the lamb. Now, Jesus is called the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world in John chapter one, verse 29. And the Jewish people, they would have practiced this for years and years and years, awaiting their Messiah to come. And now these 12 disciples are sitting in this upper room with Jesus, and he is offering them a meal that they will never forget. 
Jesus offers them an object lesson to them and to us. And now we practice communion where we take this object and we remember the bread and we remember the juice or the cup or the wine. And Jesus says, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. It's an object. It's to help us remember what Jesus went through the way that he was treated, the piercing of the nails. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities and brought by his stripes, we are healed. The flogging that happened, the crucifixion happened, the death that happened, all happened to the body of Jesus because we did wrong. And yet Jesus being the perfect sacrifice did nothing wrong. And then because Jesus endured all that torture, there was blood that was shed. And God tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. There had to be the perfect sacrifice that offered forgiveness for us. That happened on Good Friday 2,000 years ago. Jesus is foretelling this on today, Monday, Thursday, the Last Supper, hours before his crucifixion. So he gave us this object lesson to remember what he did for us. Now, he just didn't end it there. He, after supper, he gets up and he sets the example of servanthood. He washes the disciples' feet. This would be a job that a slave or a servant of the house would do. The, the low man on totem pole, if you would, not the high man. Uh, not, the, not the one that made the feast, but the one that just barely made it in as a servant. But Jesus, he sets the example for us that Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And after the meal and after he washed the disciples' feet, Judas now leaves the room and he betrays, Je betrays Jesus to the religious leaders. And now the Garden of Gethsemane happens and that all happens on Good Friday. So we remind ourselves that Judas gave the big betrayal of Jesus to the, to the religious leaders. G Judas gave them the testimony that they needed. However, all the disciples at one time or another, they abandoned Jesus in his time of need. They all left Jesus alone to go through this difficult next 24 to 36 hours by himself. But I want you to look at the, the power of John chapter 13. In the last few hours that Jesus has left in his life, he sent, he's spending it with the disciples. He continues to teach the disciples. He continues to encourage them to grow in their walk. He continues to prepare them for their what's coming for them. But he also takes an opportunity to serve the disciples. Today, on this Thursday of Holy Week. Who can you serve? Who can you focus on that somebody that you can go and minister to? We often focus on what others can do for us. When's the last time we focused on what someone else, what we can do for someone else? It's a great part of this uh, message of Holy Week on this Thursday to go and to serve somebody else. Well, this is uh, the end of our Holy Week devotions online tomorrow night good friday we're going to have a good friday service it's going to be at 6 30 it's going to run till about 7 we're going to talk about the the crucifixion of christ what it meant what he went through in some detail not all detail it is going to be about pg uh but my youngest daughter will be there so that gives you and she's 10 so that that's my target audience for not going too deep uh into what christ went through so if you want to come for a a night of family worship, remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross. I'd encourage you to come out on Friday night at 630 to the church. I hope you have a great couple days. I hope it's a days of reflection. I hope it's a days of prayer and thankfulness. And then on Sunday morning, when we gather, whether you gather with us in the building at 1030, whether you gather with us online at 11 o'clock through Facebook, whether you go to your own church, I hope it's a day that you have great victory and celebration because we have so much to be thankful for. Have a great couple days. I'll see you soon.